Okay, I'm going to quickly go over the free response for um, Chapter 7 homework. So um, I think it's just one page. Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, I, every time I look at the nucleophile, this is a weak nucleophile because it's neutral and it's not a metal counter ion. So uh, it's not, it just is ethan ethanol with alcohol. It's not a metal counter ion. So it's kind of hard to see on this. I'm used to my new camera now. Um, so because it is not a metal counter ion, um, it's just going to go E1 or SN1. Now the question tells me that it's going to be E1, so I'm guessing it's E1, but the heat also makes me favor E1 over SN1. Um, so I'm pretty confident that it's going to go E1. So the first step is the leaving group leaves. And we will get a carbocation, and then that carbocation undergoes rearrangement. And so um, that's our next step. And then we look at either one of the beta hydrogens, and the um, nucleophile of ethanol will take a beta hydrogen. And normally we'd have to consider Seitzef versus Hoffman, but there's actually only one product possible, because if we took it from the other side on, of the carbocation, it would end up in the same thing. So if instead I had taken this hydrogen, we'd still end up with um, the same molecule. And this is, it doesn't matter about stereochemistry because that is flat. So um, this would be the product for the first one. Um, so there's no Hoffman versus Seitzef because there's only one possible product. These molecules are identical. Okay, so the next is NaOH. So this is metal, so Na plus and OH minus. I've seen a lot of people get mixed up on that. If it's alcohol, it doesn't disassociate. It's only if it has this metal counter ion. Um, and for my class this semester, I did like a little at the beginning of one of our classes where I just like dispel, uh, dispelled misconceptions, and that was one of them. So go back and watch that if you need to. But with OH minus, that means we're going to get um, E2 or SN2. It's a secondary nucleophile, so it can go, oh, because, uh, yeah, it can either go um, SN2 or E2, but the heat for reflux favors E2 over SN2. So it's going to take one of these hydrogens here, but we know that, again, if I take this hydrogen, this fills in and kicks out the leaving group, we would get a molecule that looks like that. If I took the other hydrogen right here, it would give me the same thing. Um, so either way, it's the same. So again, there's not a Hoffman versus Zeitzef. These two are the same product, so that would be our answer. Um, okay, so this is again a metal counter ion, so OH minus is a strong nucleophile. If OH minus is a strong nucleophile, it's going to favor SN2 or E2. Um, with heat, it's definitely going to favor E2, and this is a tertiary leaving group. So with a tertiary leaving group, it can only do E2, so this is definitely going to do E2. Um, and this could give Hoffman or Seitzef, so uh, because this is narrow, it's going to favor Seitzef, but I'm going to draw what both products would look like, just so you can kind of practice. If it were to take the Hoffman product, the answer would look like this. We would lose, oh, I'll do this wrong, let's see. We would lose a hydrogen from right here, and that would become a double bond right there. The leaving group would leave, and we would still have our methyl group here. Um, if I took from the other side, so this is Hoffman. If I took from the other side, this electron would fill in, and the leaving group would leave the same way. And so this would be the site stuff. And because this is a narrow nucleophile, it's not branched right there at the nucleophilic atom, um, Seitzef would be favored. Okay, now this next one, this is again a strong nucleophile. We have heat, so that favors, strong is going to favor E2 or SN2. Heat is going to favor elimination over substitution. Um, so then we know that we're either going to get one of these hydrogens taken, if it takes from this side and the leaving group leaves, we end up with this. If it takes from this side and fills in and the leaving group leaves, we would end up with this. Um, so between these two, uh, this is going to be the more substituted, more stable. 
I did not take, um, I didn't give you a E or Z configuration. I didn't give you enough information to determine which one it would be. So um, you can put both the cis and trans product. I am going to guess that this one would be um, more likely to form because there's two hydrogens it can take to stuff from. So that one would be the more stable. So this is a site Ceph. And again, because we have a narrow nucleophile, that would be favored. This is a Hoffman, and that would be favored if we had something like tert butoxide. Okay, and then this at the bottom, we have methanol. This is a weak nucleophile. So again, it goes SN1 or E1. Um, and with heat, we think it would favor E1. Uh, but I'm just going to check over here and see that this is a primary leading group. So if it's a primary leading group, it can't go SN1 and E1. So even though it's weak, it's actually going to go for SN2 or E2. And with heat, it'll favor E2 primarily. So that means that our um, there's only one place we can take our hydrogen from. This is our carbon of interest, and this is our beta hydrogen. So there's only one product possible. And so your product would be um, ethene, the simplest, it's uh, the simplest alkene possible. Okay, so um, I went through that pretty quickly, but hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, and I'll do chapter six in um, a separate video.